Welcome to Bite-Sized Agency Briefs, a webinar series that packs a ton of important agency information on one topic from one expert into a 25-minute brief. Why 25 minutes? Because who has the attention span for much more these days? And you can squeeze in a listen between meetings with time for a bathroom break or coffee refill before your next meeting. Thanks for tuning in. This is Bite Sized Agency Briefs. I'm your host, Steve Guberman from Agency Outsight, where I coach agency owners to build the agency of their dreams. Uh, my guest today is Steve Jeffries. He's joining me from across the pond where he is a professional breakthrough coach at Your Shift. Uh, he helps people step up into leadership in the marketing industry and beyond. Uh, thanks for joining me, Steve. How are you today? Thanks very much, Steve. I'm very well, thank you. Very well. Enjoying the English summertime. The English summertime. Awesome. Uh, here in New Jersey, summertime, it is wicked, humid, and pretty nasty. So. Um, I think the, the fact that we broke the world record of the, the hottest day on earth yesterday makes sense for what we're feeling here. So, oh, wow. Well, I'm nowhere yeah. near that level, but um, it's, it's good nonetheless here. Good. So let's dig in, man. Tell me about, about your shift personally, but then what led you, your shift to lead to your shift? We can kind of inceptionize that. Um, like, sure. So background that lead, led to you launching your shift and what's your shift all about? Yeah, of course. Um, so I uh, I was an ad man for 18 years in, in London agencies, uh, mm -hmm. and that was both big networked agencies and smaller shops as well. Um, I'm a suit by trade mm -hmm. and I worked my way through the ranks and, you know, did all of the things which I'm sure transcend across the pond, as you say. Mm -hmm. And um, and I absolutely loved it. It was a fantastic career to, to have. I learned loads, I experienced loads, I met my wife there and um, worked on some terrific brands with some terrific agencies, learned from some great people, so so many pluses and I um, got to senior leadership positions, um, managing large teams and, and leading large clients with big budgets, which was mm -hmm. all great and all the reasons I went into it. Um, but then I, I kind of got to a point where I reached diminishing returns and I thought, well, actually, there is probably something else I'd like to do. I didn't quite know what it was. And the pandemic came around and like for many people, it accelerated things for me. And long story short, um, I decided to focus in on something that I'm very passionate about, which is developing people, but developing people in a way that they can find things about themselves, which they didn't previously know and bring those to the fore. Uh, and obviously my agency experience lends itself well to that given the places I've been and the teams I've led. Mm -hmm. um, but what I've learned is that that transcends, as you said, beyond the agency sector to a variety of businesses. People are people at the end of the day. And that's what I now do. So I decided to focus in specifically on the area of, of um, kind of breakthrough leadership because that was the shift I found the hardest to do when it becomes much less about what you do and it becomes much more about who you influence and how you do it mm -hmm. and with the business experience behind me and, and the lessons I've learned I thought well I've got that credibility base to be able to do that and um, it is a more un underrepresented part of the coaching world um, so I thought I'd go for it and and that's where I'm building my business and it's going well so far. So do you think there's a distinction between leadership in general and what breakthrough leadership is that you focus on i th i think there is and i think the main thing for me is when you come into a leadership position firstly no one prepares you for it and right. secondly you've kind of got to find your own wings and find your own way of doing things mm -hmm. and what i found was having time and space to be able to do that which you know, you, you don't often get, in fact, you, you rarely get, is really important. Um, and I was lucky enough when I went through um, into breakthrough leadership to have a, a supportive environment in which to do that. I benefited mm -hmm. from some coaching myself and it enabled me to think in different ways, think laterally about what I was really good at, stuff I wasn't so good at and the things that I needed to improve on but also enabled me to look at, right, what is it that the organization needs and how can I bring the best of myself to do that so that everything's in the right mold? So I think it's an important point to get right because if you do get it right, then you set yourself up well for the future. 
and it gives you a layer of awareness which I'm not to say that you won't get it otherwise, but it certainly gives you a jump start to get that. And you kind of get the opportunity to repackage yourself um, for for now and the future. So so like what do you define as breakthrough leadership? Is it when when a leader sees somebody down the ranks that they can pull up into leader, a leadership role and, and need to train them and guide them and mold them and you know be a mentor for them? Or am I misconstruing that? I, I say it, well, I think it is that, but I think it's, um, I regard breakthrough leadership as when your sphere of influence becomes, it's not just kind of looking down and kind of leading a group of people, but it's being accountable to those above. And it's then understanding what the landscape above you looks like, what the landscape beside of you looks like and where, and where peers play in and where it becomes about performing as part of a high functioning team to make the whole greater than the sum of its parts. So I think I regard breakthrough leadership as being slightly less linear than it otherwise would be. So, I mean, mm-hmm. if you're managing people, you're managing people, you, 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 you know, this is reducing it to its essence, but you're managing specific tasks, you're managing specific people. Whereas I think breakthrough leadership is where, yeah, you do that, but then you also do a load of other stuff around the sides and you've got to think about a few moves ahead. You've got to think about what other industries are doing. You've got to think about what clients are doing. And there's various different things that you have to get in the right, blend to be able to get right and that's hard mm-hmm. to do interesting and do you think that's so obviously that's not specific to the marketing industry like you said people are people and so that sort of breakthrough leadership occurs in all industries but do you think it's nuanced in the ad space in in marketing and just in agencies in general or is it not that nuanced i think it's more acute in the agency environment and i say that because um, you know, you're an agency man yourself, so you know that clients don't rest on their laurels and, mm-hmm. you know, the next new business opportunity is just around the corner. That's not to say that other businesses aren't as fast paced, but I think given the advertising industry, it's so cutthroat that it's sink or swim and you've got to be able to quickly pivot and, and change to meet that need. So I think it becomes all the more important to get right within an agency environment um, and not least because, you know, agency A can be so different to agency B and different again to agency C and all, all of those different kinds of things that go on. And there's lots of component parts which go into it. So I think it's kind of, you know, without sounding too lofty, it's kind of managing those intangibles that, that come with it and getting those in the right order um, to to be able to do it. Now, I don't have the experience of other industries to know if that's exclusive to the advertising industry but certainly my experience of it is you know when I think about my agency days be they in networked or or smaller shops um you know it's for every single day is full on it's pedal to the metal it's now 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 it's clients want stuff yesterday it's okay we've got to change switch the focus of the scope or whatever it might be stuff happens at 100 miles an hour and you've kind of got Mm -hmm. to gear yourself up to meet that challenge so no, so knowing that the the typical agency culture is that like, you know, 100 miles an hour, 12 days a week, 50 hours a day, chaos uh, on top of chaos, only to see, you know, when something lands and you execute an amazing campaign, you get the results and the client attaboys you. Um, what are some of those, I guess, characteristics or DNA elements that leadership should look for to kind of help that? internal growth you know finding people that they want to promote in that in that environment and you talk about lateral mm. recruitment you know what what, mm. what, are, what should people be looking for yeah um that's a that's a, a big question and, and certainly one which i've seen go i've seen answered in a couple of different ways i think that the best way to probably answer that is uh, as you said there lateral recruitment by that i mean you you recruit for uh, you recruit for a behavior as opposed to a role and you mm-hmm. recruit for certain characteristics that you want to see within within the business. I think one of the things that I've heard many agency people talk about is making sure that creativity runs throughout the entire business. It's not the preserve of the creative department, the strategists and the suits and the, the you know, the, the data bods. Everyone should have creative with a small C in there. Um, and I think that's crucially important because you want people that can think for themselves you want people that are as invested in the agency products and the clients as you are, not just because those people could be the, the 
you know, the future leaders of tomorrow, but because agency life is such that client A or client B can turn around tomorrow and say, do you know what? I found someone that can do it quicker, faster, cheaper, whatever, mm-hmm. better, whatever. And you've got to find new and different ways to do things. So I think you need that speed of thought. You need that entrepreneurialism to work at each and every level to, to do that. Um, and I think one of the things when I talk about recruiting laterally is, you know, think beyond the job descriptions, because, yes, you can you can recruit for a job description. You can put it through a hopper and it will say, yes, this candidate is the best possible person. But I've always been very interested in what motivates this person. How hungry are they to succeed? You know, where have they been before? What's their background? Like all of those kind of things, which I think mm-hmm. you can hint at, at someone what ambition they have. You know, what what do they know about the industry already? Are they already thinking a few moves ahead? Things like that. Not to say that you need to recruit superstars at every point, but kind of having some of those things, which, you know, I don't know if you've been in those, some of those interviews where you interview someone and you think, do you know what? They've got something about them. They might not be the perfect fit for this job, but they're good. And gut feel tells me I should probably get them in. Now, I've also done that and it's gone wrong. So um, it's not it's not a faultless formula. But I think that's something that's really key. And, and it's quite a hard thing to get right, I'd say. But that also kind of points to a lot of recruiters, HR leaders, whatever, will, will say, well, let's hire for their raw talents and we can train them on the skills or the, uh, you know, the tactical aspects of what their role might be. But raw talent, characteristics, just a really good person. Like I'm not going to hire a really good person to fill a role if they don't have, you know, the talent and skills to execute. But if, mm. but if they've got, if they're a good person and they've got the talent, but they don't really have, they don't know our systems or, you know, whatever those things are, like that's all trainable stuff. So that's the kind of person you're talking about. Like, don't let them go, bring them in, mentor them, help, help them elevate, you know, what their craft really is about and everybody benefits there. Right. Absolutely. Exactly that. I mean, some, not, not everyone can pick stuff up in exactly the same way. What I always found quite interesting was, and this is probably more in the larger agencies than the small, but you say you get someone in as a, as a junior suit, actually you might quickly find out, or they might quickly find out they're more suited to planning because their brain works yeah. in a particular way, or they're not so good with clients. And likewise, do you know what? That person has brilliant ideas. They work superbly with a copyright or whatever it might be. And mm-hmm. you kind of get them in as a, almost like at a, an aggregate level. And then you work out where they best fit. And I know, mm-hmm. you know, that some agencies do do that, but I've always been quite interested in that. I, um, you know, I saw friends of mine do exactly that leap. I don't yeah. think I've ever seen anyone go into account handling after it, but um, I've certainly seen it work from account handling into other areas. So make of that what you will. Yeah. But I also love that you say, listen, everybody should have that kind of creativity even with a small C in part of what their DNA is. So many people are like, oh, you know, you work in the marketing industry. I'm the most uncreative person. And when you find people that can approach their job, to me, all it means is like, can you think outside the box? You know, not to use a cliche phrase, but it, it fits. Like an engineer is typically not a very creative person, no matter how you define the word creative, because they are very process driven. They're very linear. They're very, you know, everything is black and white. But if you can find just a little bit outside the, the, the lines of that drawing, there's there's the air of creativity and like you said account management biz dev like bring those people into the fold because they might be able to see things from a different perspective and help you know kind of stoke the creative fires um so i think everybody on the team should have that you know on some level yeah mm. you agree yeah no absolutely and i think one of the things that um you know came to mind um when you were talking about that was ask big questions of people and you know, set them a set them a big challenge. Set them something which, at, at face value, they're going to say, "Well, I can't solve that." You think, "Well, yeah, go for it. Have a think about it. Look at the edges of it. Involve other people, and kind of leave it up to someone's um, uh, ingenuity to figure out the best way around a problem." Not everyone will do it, but mm-hmm. I think it, it it kind of encourages people to go beyond their comfort zone to do that. And you know, you can do that within the confines of a certain brief. You can do it within a you know, probably the most vulnerable leaders will say, do you know what? I've got a certain view of how things are operating, but I would really value this group of people telling me another point of view and being open to what that tells them. 
And I think that is, A, that's, a, I think, a very healthy and a very modern thing to do and certainly something that should be encouraged. Um, but B, I think it's needed because if you want people to be the leaders of tomorrow, there's, there's no better way to do that than, um, you know, throwing them a, a, a chassis of a car and seeing how they build it effectively. It's a do you think that that's, that's best suited, I guess, what's the phrase, like unilaterally, like open to anybody or, or from a upper leadership pushing it down to uh, subordinates, I hate to use that word, but, you know, people down, mm. down the ranks that say, hey, let's see if you can rise to the challenge, like in what direction should that flow? I think it, I, th I think to be honest with you, the, the, the culture starts at the top, right? So I think the culture mm -hmm. of that should start with the and the the leaders should model the, the senior leaders rather should model that behaviour. Um, mm -hmm. But then the culture should always be, you know what? If you've got a problem, see how see different points of view, and that should kind of filter down. So I kind of see it as working each and every way. I think it takes a brave company or a brave agency to be able to do that. Um, I don't know if that maybe lends itself more to larger rather than smaller or smaller to larger not mm -hmm. really sure but i think it it kind of needs um a good level of uh vulnerability and good le good level of openness to be able to do that and, and do it well yeah i like that you mentioned brave i you know i don't necessarily think of large agencies as brave i feel like i could be way wrong i don't have any experience there um, but I, I, I see them as just large machines of too many layers and too many redundancies and too many missed, missed, uh, missed talent opportunities. And I, I just like, that's where people maybe cut their teeth and learn how crappy it can be and then find like a small to medium sized agency and like really thrive. But I think that brave part is, is super valuable on the smaller, more nimble size where like, we're not we're not a great fit for this, but we're going to go for it, and we're going to bring everybody in to ask those big questions, like you talked about, so that we mm. can raise up to the next bar. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like so, so I think the bravery part maybe it applies on the larger agency size, but I see it on the you know mid size and, and below, you know those those B and C level agencies where if they want to really make a difference, if they really want to win those those contracts, they've got to take a big shot and put it all on the line. Um, I do think so, I do yeah. think you're right. And that's a good reflection um, to, to counter with Steve. I think that, um, you know, having been in larger agencies, I got loads from it. So I, mm -hmm. I can't I can't deny that. But there's more places to hide. Mm. And, and I think that's a that's a key thing. Um, there's more places to hide. There's, as you said, there's more layers. There's more layers to sell to clients. All those kind of things, which which we know. And as a result of that, I think what what I certainly found was the, you know, you kind of got your show ponies out for the show pony events, and you know that's not new. We all know that that often happens, mm -hmm. but that kind of stifles those beneath, and people probably hide a little bit more because of it. Um, so I do think you're right. Um, and actually, having gone from a larger to a smaller that that is absolutely right and i think certainly when i first started that move that was hard because mm. i'd probably been um incubated within a system that um it had so much machinery around it you, you had you know there was a job for this there was a job for that you had a department for this department for that and then all of a sudden hang on there's this cred stack that needs put together oh we don't have a cred stack right okay better create a cred stack and then there's no you know there's no big new business departments call on or anything like that you've got to create it and you can do it um but again it just needs you to think laterally that word again and um and know that you can do it yeah you also talk a lot about like encouraging failure and like taking a risk and like what's the value in that in in pushing people through leadership roles so i think uh, certainly and i say this from my own experience as well when i first went into a, a senior leadership role I was scared to make certain decisions because I was worried that I was going to balls it up for want mm -hmm. of a better phrase um and I think sometimes it's just best to say do you know what try it if it works brilliant if it doesn't doesn't matter and you know what we'll learn something or we'll get to go in another direction I think that's really really healthy mm -hmm. uh I think I wish I'd have encouraged that more when when I was um in that uh industry I don't think I did enough of that. I think it's only in retrospect that I've seen that and, and the value in doing that. Um, and possibly because you know, I've been out of the agency world now for 
a couple of years, but things have moved on a lot in that time, not least with, with COVID and, um, you know, all of the, the, the well-publicized um, benefits and, and drawbacks of remote work where people, yes, they can hide, but also people can get scared and, and lonely. Mm-hmm. So I think it's coming to sharper focus. Um, I think, again, to the point we were talking about earlier, it takes a brave leader to be able to say that. And the direction for that is set right at the top. So if those behaviors are modeled and celebrated, um, then then brilliant. And, and I think that's great. And I, if I think now to some of the, you know, the all hands meetings or the town halls or all agency meetings, call them what you want, um, where, you know, you get that rose tinted view of this is amazing. We're hitting these targets, we're hitting those targets. Actually, a really ref- refreshing thing could be, do you know what? There's a load of stuff we haven't got right at all levels. These are some of those things. This is what we've learned to kind of give that permission that it's OK to do. So, yeah. Um, I wish I'd said that at the time when I was in an agency. That would have been a great idea. But now, <laughs> now you can. There's still time, I guess. Yeah, I can absolutely. indeed. And, and I think it's important, you know, like push people to try new things, fail fast, learn from the failures. Failure is not a bad thing. You know, and I think that that's becoming more and more like a cultural norm that like, you know, there's books about it, there's podcasts about it. There's, you know, tons and tons of uh, influencers that that's their shtick. And, and it's a good shtick. I like it. Um, especially mm-hmm. in our industry, but I think in any industry where you need to innovate and think fast on your feet, like try something, if it doesn't work, what worked, what didn't work from it, like there's lessons in, in all of that stuff. So yeah, I love mm-hmm. that just as, a, as, a, as a, a principle to kind of work by and elevate potential leaders by, see how they respond yeah. to the, the ability to fail fast or do they like just drown in the failure? Indeed. And um, as you were saying, I thought, well, actually, the, the new generation coming into the workforce, Gen Z, I mean, they're hopefully primed for exactly this. They're a lot more. Yeah. Open. I mean, I'm on the cusp of Gen X and, and millennial. So, um, you know, the, the new people coming through into the workplace, they're, they're very brave. They're very forthright. Uh, they are very open. Uh, no, all very good things. And I think I think the future of leadership, the future of agency leadership, the future of agency models is going to be quite interesting as they come through the ranks. I think that will be one to look, one to look out for. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, a lot of talent. I think that the way that uh, new, newer and younger generations are being brought into the workforce and, and how we can tap into their skills and their passions and the things that are near and dear to their heart is is exciting to watch for. So uh, I want to spend the next couple minutes, a couple of random rapid fire questions for you um unrelated to your shift but maybe still inspired by your shift so please do i'm gonna i'm wondering uh, what you're gonna hit me with man better get ready for this what what's book or audio book or show or something that you just can't get enough of these days oh goodness me um a show well i'll tell you what i've just binged on ted lasso and i'm late to the party on that one um i can't remember who mentioned it to me but for what i think it's because i didn't have apple tv Mm. and i loved it at face value just for the pure mindless entertainment of it all yeah um and and i and i love that because i think that for so long i haven't watched something that i've genuinely escaped into and i'm a big football fan soccer fan myself so um you know that that really helped and you know he's a very engaging character so so that was good um as for as for book, um, I'm reading one at the moment, which is I'm going to forgive me. I'm going to try and get the title of this right. Um, it's by a, a lady I met on on Lunch Club actually, um, and it's called um, "Leaving My Wallet on the Car Roof." Hmm. Uh, and I've I've massively bastardized that title because I can't remember quite what it is off the top of my head. Um, and that is all about some of the pivotal kind of sliding doors moments that you get when you are hmm. younger when you're becoming a leader, where you learn from your experiences, effectively failing quickly, learning from it and going again. It's by a lady called Anne Drummy. Um, maybe for the, for the show notes, if you provide yeah. some of those, then I'll, I'll, I'll get the title. But I think it's, I left my wallet on the car roof. It's really good. It's really engaging. It's really funny. Uh, and it talks about getting lessons from the world of business, from the world of, of sports, um, and from generally being a digital nomad and kind of going here, there and everywhere. And examples are drawn from each of those. And I think what I found so refreshing about that is it wasn't one dimensional and it enabled, you know, you to relate from different scenarios. And I think it made the learning from all of it a lot 
um, sharper and a, mm -hmm. and a lot richer as a result. So and she'll kill me now for not having me not the having butchering. remembered the precise name of the book. No, so she'll, I apologize thank, if she'll listening. thank you once we link to it and the droves of people that listen to this will link over to it and her book sales will just go through the roof. So she'll be eternally grateful for it. Um, Excellent. News. Yeah. And I'll expect a, a hefty royalty payment off the back of that. Exactly. As well. uh, and then finally, what's a tool, digital or physical or otherwise, that you've recently kind of put into your life that you found just totally invaluable? Uh, it's going to be one which I swear by, and it's a it's a physical tool, and it is just inserting a half an hour fire break into my diary just to go for a run, hmm. and and I do that because. I, uh, you know, I've, I've got a, a nice office here. It's great. We're in a nice part of the world, but my thinking gets quite stale yep. quite quickly if I don't freshen it up. And if I do that, I'll go out into the fields. I'll think I'll, you know, I won't take anything out with me. I'll get new ideas. I'll get, you know, the, the deck I'm building suddenly becomes clearer. All of those kind of things, you know, well-worn themes, but it's true. It works for me. I come back, might be a bit sweatier, but I'm a lot clearer in the head. Yeah. And um, it gives me a new jolt of energy. And I have to keep reminding myself to do that because some days, like yesterday, for example, I was, I was really tired and I thought, do you know what? I just can't be asked. Um, and I did do it and it helps and it gave me a new jolt. So that's yeah. what I swear by. I love that time blocking, the ability to step away from the screen, go get the endorphins going, get the sweat going, get a fresh air, you know, fresh perspective, some fresh air. Uh, big fan of that mm -hmm. myself. So Jeff, uh, Steve, uh, thank you so much for your time today. You can call me uh, Jeff. That's fine. I answered to both. It's funny. My brother's name is Jeff. And so Steve and Jeff and your name just kind of botched it in my brain. But uh, I'm grateful <laughs> no for worries. your time and your experience and your wisdom and your knowledge. So thank you for spending time with us today. No problem. Thank you for having me. Thanks again for tuning in to Bite Sized Agency Briefs. As always, if you found value in this episode, chances are someone else will too, so please share it with your network. Also, if you know someone with expert knowledge on a topic that agency owners would love, drop me a note. Let's get them on. Finally, find someone to hug today.